Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today's video is something that a lot of people do ask about. Um, so please understand, I'm going to go back to my book today, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. And I've already got the ruler in, so as you can see how thick my book is, 369 pages. I'm going to talk about my life review today. So first question that a lot of people ask me is, do we all go through our life review? The answer is no. Okay. There are certain souls who do stay on earth who we call ghosts. And if you've got an interest in this, please stay tuned because my ghost book is coming out in about another month and it's going to be an educational book all about ghosts, why they stay, what's the psychology and the science behind why they stay. And it also explains what they do, what they can't do. And there's also questions and answers in the back. Um, so that today it's not about ghosts. But the main reason that I mentioned them is because ghosts do not do their life review unless they go to heaven. The second people who do not process their life review are those who go south. Hell, hell loop, hellish experience. So I'm going to do a video on who I believe go to that hell experience, okay? So obviously ghosts and those who go to hell do not process their life review because if you've got a copy of my book, I actually go to heaven, which is in this part of the book, I go to heaven before I did my life review. So they were showing me, you know, this girl that is always with me who was directing me around. She actually wanted me to see what it was like there because I wasn't staying. So she had to show me that first. I can understand it now why I went to heaven first and then I processed my life review because next time, well, next time I may not die again, you know, I've already died once and I came back. So the time when I go there um, permanently, <laughs> I'll call it, um, I'll actually do my life review first before I go into heaven so I'm cleansed and I'm healed, okay? Because our life review is all about healing our past mistakes and seeing the perspective of the whole situation. So we learn understanding, compassion, patience, and most of all, forgiveness. Okay? So on page 119, straight from my book, I've got a chapter here called The Big Three. So when I entered into this area I'll call it there was the big three which is also the front cover of my book so there's a there's a picture I drew when I I actually drew this one when I was still in hospital um, before I got discharged back in 2001 and I've also got it as the cover of my book five years in heaven okay if interested there's a link below in the description where you can go and buy it on Lulu or other websites okay so I was standing in front of these big three. So what was it like for me? I was alone. Standing in this, what I would call one of the most gorgeous architecturally designed cathedrals. Um, I can't explain the size of it because it was so immense. You know, we have pieces of wood here, which we call four by twos. But imagine a plank of wood that's 200 feet long and 15 feet wide and two inch, two feet deep. That sort of planks of wood. You know, we talk here on earth about limestone rocks. Um, and I've seen some big ones that they do for like fencing and retaining walls. And they're about four foot square um, to make a cube. The ones in this cathedral were like 35, 100 feet across and down. And then so it made a cube. So they were absolutely massive, these stones and the woodwork that I saw in this place. So I'm looking around at all the um, windows and the architecture of the arches where the wood and the stones melded. 
Now, if you don't know the, pardon me, if you don't know the word meld, M-E-L-D, not T, melt, it's meld. So what happens when we meld something together? It's like they are formed. So if you've got a rock and a plank of wood, they go together and what it does is it creates a new substance in the middle because it's A plus B equals C. So they meld together to make that unison, okay? So this is what I was just looking around by myself, admiring the architecture and the ornate carvings. And there was chairs there like church pews, um, but they were not just like a four-seater. They were extremely long, so like 20 people could sit on these pews. And there was tens of them. I don't know, I didn't actually sit there and count them. But there is a lot of these pews that I saw. Okay, so obviously if there are 20 seaters, that's a long piece of furniture. And there was 20 or 30 of these chairs that I saw around the place. So then I was drawn like a magnetism to turn. It was like a pull. I got pulled to turn. And I saw these three standing down a ways where I had to walk down to see them. And in front of them was this box. The box was in front of them. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, I looked at these guys. Well, were they male or female? I honestly don't know because they had no features that would distinguish a gender. Okay. The energy, because this is energy, was traveling upwards like electricity. It was energy. So if you can imagine water falling out of a tap into your sink, turn that around so it's going backwards, upwards, but it was energy, it wasn't water, okay? So the energy was traveling up, and as it got closer to their head formation, it was rotating left to right, as well as right to left, so it's clockwise and anti-clockwise at the same time. So I'll just bring that in so you can see that. So it's actually energy going one way as well as the other. So these big three were sitting there. And I'll just go here from my book, page 123. I said, I stood there in total awe of their magnificence. It was like a regal or noble respect that I had for these three. Because it was emitting out of me. You know, they could have been the scum of the world. But I still had that feeling of that regalness, that um, dignity, that noble. Okay? So it was coming out of me. Even though in I did not know who they were, I knew what they represented. Because it's all energy up there. It's what we feel, like emotions. Okay? And these three were far more advanced, far more intelligent far more connected to the universal energies than I would ever perceive to be. So I knew that they knew far, far more than I was possibly going to gain at this point. As I watched the energy spiraling around their heads, <clears throat> yeah, I could see in their consciousness. So I could see into them. So I was then part of their experience as well. You know, um, so we've got that oneness of heaven. It was reminiscent of looking into a galaxy and seeing every particle of that galaxy and knowing every single particle from the next. A total understanding, a total knowing. These beings knew it all. For they, represented, they were representatives of the source. Okay? So some people over the years have called these the higher council some people call them the ascended masters some people call it god when they have their life review okay but i don't really want to put a title on them because i don't do titles even though you know, i've got a phd because that's to satisfy the ego of other people who live in this realm okay that's why i call myself dr linda kramer because it gives credibility for those who want to know who i am but when we're in heaven, our titles mean nothing. We are all the same. So these three that I was interacting with, they did not cast judgment on who I was. 
And I did not cast judgment onto who they were or what they represented. It simply did not matter. Okay? So, chapter 10 is one page on 125. 125. This is where I go into my life review. Now, people have asked me, is it all bad? When we go through our memories, is it all bad? Because in my book, I talk about some bad situations where I had to correct it. So, <clears throat> again, this is me not being egotistical. Imagine if I wrote this book where I said, oh, yes, I'm so grateful that I did this great cause for somebody. And then in this instance, I did something good for somebody else, so I felt their appreciation. I don't want it to be egotistical because this book is not about me, okay? So I have picked out situations where I personally hurt somebody else. So then you guys understand the process of how we heal all the negativity within us okay so it's not a representation that I'm a bad person and it's not a representation that I never did anything good because straight off the top of my hat I'm already seeing a couple of instances where I was just nice to people through my life because even these little random acts of kindness we must still process them in our life review so I reached inside this box I'll just show you the front cover, the box. There was no walls, there was no roof to it. It was eternal when I looked inside it. And see all this, this is energy coming out of it, by the way, okay? It's all energy. So when I reached inside this box with no walls, no roof and no floor, there was millions and millions of these little spheres. And they look like little balls about this big. And inside each one, so they're spherical, and inside each one was a little video screen. So the one I talk about first is the memory when I was a baby, because I still had a nappy on in this memory. I saw it in amongst all these millions and millions of my memories. And I picked out this one, the one ball or orb or sphere, whatever you want to call it. And inside was a little video screen showing the day when I was a baby and I was playing with my grandmother's white Persian cat in her front yard over at Stafford in Queensland. So I've got a picture in my book about what this looks like. So it's a sphere. It's not just round. It's spherical. And here is the little video of me sitting there as a baby in my nappy. And there's the cat and I'm pulling its tail. So what did I have to go through with this memory? First of all, I was external. I was watching it like a stranger would watching an event unfold across their street. So I was watching it from a distance and I saw Linda as a baby because she was separate to me at this point. It was a totally separate person, even though it was me. So I'm watching Linda as a baby. I'm just going to call her the child. So I was watching the child playing with this cat and she was like touching its back and then I was filled with all this love because I remembered um, times when I've had pets over the years and what it's like to touch their skin or their fur and it's sometimes it's coarse sometimes it's soft so I was having this moment where I was reflecting on my own life because it wasn't hers at this point this child who was Linda and I was actually feeling because it's all emotion and energy right I was feeling how it was to be touching a cat from my memories okay so as I watch this child playing with the cat instantly the child does this little giggle <laughs> pulls its tail and instantly as I'm watching it I was thinking oh my Oh, she shouldn't be doing that that's going to hurt the cat <clears throat> so as I am watching as an external Linda I had to judge what just happened for both parties I had to sit there and analyze did the child do something that they knew was wrong no that child didn't know it was wrong to pull the tail of the cat. It didn't know consequences. 
It didn't know that pulling the tail was going to hurt. And then I had to look at the cat and say, did the cat do something knowing it was wrong? No. So I had to judge it firstly as an external person. <clears throat> then I became the child. Instantly I'm sitting on the ground and as I look down I'm wearing a nappy and I'm now about a year and a half old. And I had the same thinking process but it was like off in the distance in my mind I could still be an adult analysing this situation. So it was like there was two of us inside my head. So as I'm the baby now and I'm playing with the cat and I'm touching it and I could feel the fur and I can feel the wind that day back in the 1960s and I could feel the grass under my legs because I'm sitting there with my legs folded wearing a nappy, right? I was back in that moment. <clears throat> now that's going to be very, very important for a video that I do in a few days regarding hell and what we create as our hell, okay? So if you do watch this video that I do in a few days, it's going to be called How Does Hell Work, okay? So watch out for that one because it's very important that we relive this moment from our past, okay? So there I was as a child and I'm seeing just like a vision and replaying all the thoughts going through this baby's mind as a baby. There was no analytical thinking, critical thinking, because a child at 18 months doesn't know how to do that, correct? So I'm sitting there as this 18-month-old child, and I just thought, oh, I'll pull its tail. So I reached out, because now I am the 18-month-old, 18 18 right? I pulled its tail. So then I had to sit there and analyse. Why did she do it? No doubt just said, why did she do it? Because she, as an 18-month-old, was separate to me as a 35-year-old woman at that point when I died. So why did that baby pull the tail of the cat? She actually thought it was cute, okay? She thought it would be funny. So then, as I come back out of Linda, the 18-month-old baby, then I become the cat and instantly as I'm transformed into this cat again I can feel the wind but it's different this time because now I'm an animal I can feel it going through my whiskers and I can feel the sensing of what whiskers are about this time I could see through the cat's eyes they don't see like humans so when I look back at this 18 month old baby it was so different it wasn't in the same colours. They're in different colours to us. She, This cat, because I know it was a female, because I'm now a female cat, this cat, she, she had all these thoughts going through her head. And it wasn't like, oh, I need to go to the shop today and buy food. It was, oh, I'm hungry. See? Because, pardon me, they don't even have the same thinking process as us. So I understood straight away how cats think. Wow. So I'm processing all this information because it's all new for me, right? Oh my God, I'm this cat. And as the wind came across, I could feel the wind picking in the fur. And I could feel the grass under its legs. And it was a different feeling to the child, who was me, by the way, sitting there on the grass with the grass on her skin. Because now she's, I've got fur. So not only am I comparing the cat to the 18-month-old baby, I'm also now the cat going through this process of what she'd done that morning where she did her poos in the kitty tray inside the kitchen. Okay, that sort of stuff. Okay, and I realised cats can have memories. They know what they've done in the last couple of hours. Wow, okay. So I'm processing all this and how long would this take? Because I've just been, I've, I've been on the external of Linda watching Linda and the cat then I became the Linda and now I've become the cat. So this would have taken probably half an hour, half an hour, I say, if it was in real time here on earth. So now that I'm the cat 
And this little kid sitting next to me on the grass, who I wasn't really happy with, by the way, I was annoyed. But I was happy to sit there because I could feel the sun on my fur warming up my skin under my fur. Because our first, um, our fur at this point, because I was a cat, our fur sticks out so the rays of the sunlight heats up the skin in the dander under the fur. So I'm admiring all this experience because I'd never experienced what it was like to have fur before, right? So I'm processing all this information and analysing it and thinking, wow, this is absolutely amazing that I'm now this cat back in the 1960s sitting in my grandmother's front yard. So then this little girl, because I wasn't happy with her because she was giggling and I'm thinking, shut up, shut up. Because all I wanted to do was sense. My whiskers were sensing the air. My my whiskers were also sensing any ants or little insects. And I was thinking, oh, there's a lizard over there. I might go and pounce on it and catch it and play with it. So now I'm going through this whole thing that we all know about cats. You know, they're pretty demented animals. They will catch an animal, they'll catch a lizard and spend three hours playing with it before they eat it. That's like really demented, right? So I'm going through all these processes just with this cat. Where this cat's thinking, oh, there's a noise over there. What is it? Is it a mouse? And it wasn't like calling it a mouse because it was like a vision of a mouse, which I call a mouse. So I'm seeing like it's back with its tail and its little legs and its little mouth, right? Because the cat didn't call it a mouse, okay? Where is it? I want it. I want to eat it. I know I can eat that. So now I'm going through all the, I know I can eat it. So I'm this cat. So then this little girl next to me pulls my tail. And it's like, what the hell? Instantly, the pain rained all the way down my back. And it wasn't nice. It was tenfold, okay? It was tenfold. And it went through my tail And it was excruciatingly, horribly bad. Traumatic. So, of course, I, because I'm the cat, I go, Row! And I hissed at the little girl. Not so much because it was like a punishment. It was that simple reaction to having that pain going down through my back and tail. So... Instantly, I, as Linda, the 35-year-old, when I died and I'm having this experience, I could analyse straight away. Oh, my God, the analogy of cats, their tail doesn't just go to their bum. It goes all the way up to their neck because this is where all the pain was coming down through, right? So it was really cool that I learned so much about anatomy of a cat this day, right? So there I was now, the cat, thinking... My God, she's just hurt me. I'm going to hiss at her and I'm going to do the swipe with my claws, right? So then I come out of this because I'm now back holding the little ball. And I could see the cat and I can see myself as a baby. And then I had to pause, recalculate every aspect of that perspective and I had to calculate even the weather conditions even the moisture on the grass even the baby and the cat and that action that led to the reaction because obviously when the cat hissed the baby started crying So why did the baby cry? Because it was scared. Thought it was going to get hurt by the cat doing this with its claws. So I sat on one of these long chairs and the tears are rolling out of my eyes. And I'm sitting there thinking, did that child do something deliberately wrong? Or was it just an action where they didn't know the consequences? They didn't know the reaction. So I'm sitting on this chair, one of those long pews that hold like 20 people. 
tears are running down my face because look now I'm back in this memory today look I've got tears running down my face and I looked down because I had my feet and there's water all over the floor how long did I sit on this chair for contemplating just this one memory of me with the cat you know in my book I say some memories were like half an hour some would have been about an hour some of them were a lot longer especially when we've got look I've got tears coming down my eyes because I'm back in that moment now because near-death experiences say you know when we have these memories of being back at home it's like it happened yesterday and even though we're now in 2022 and I died in 2001 it's 21 years has passed but the memory of me standing there in front of these big three it could have happened yesterday it is so valid it is so fresh and it is so vivid just like it happened yesterday so I sat on this chair and I'm looking down at all this water that's accumulating from all these tears and I had to analyze what occurred total analysis of perception and perspective what did the girl do what did the cat do how did the girl react how did the cat react what was the initial intention that caused that occurrence that day it was huge and it's private I will go there it is private so I sat there probably an hour just on one memory going through it all to the point where I could call it healed and I knew when it was healed because as I was holding that ball sphere orb with that video screen once I'd healed myself for the actions of that day and the reactions from the cat and the reactions from the grass and the reactions from the wind and then the reaction from my mother coming out and saying why did you do that to the cat because I saw it all <laughs> mum running down the front stairs at my grandmother's house why did you do that <laughs> oh my gosh see it's like it just happened yesterday for me and you know I'm now 50 I'm nearly 56 so this is like a 54 year old memory but it's right here right now because I was holding that memory which seemed like only yesterday and as I healed and I said to myself you are only doing what you thought was right so there's no grudge there's no regret and most of all there's no guilt associated to this event the video within the orb that I was holding it simply disappeared so now I'm sitting on this bench looking around at this magnificent architecture of this building you know the stone flooring was just so immaculately magnificent and I look back up at these three and I heard within my own head now you can proceed for the next one so I stood up off the chair and I noticed something very very important at this point as I looked down you know I probably I cried a bucket of tears during this process of the cat and as I looked down the floor was now dry because there was no more tears because that memory no longer existed it had been healed in the energetic realignment so I walked back up to the box in front of the big three and I looked inside with all these millions and millions of these orbs 
Which one's next? Some of them were really good. You know those times when you're just walking down the street and you just smile at somebody? Whoa! So as you're holding that memory and you're reliving that memory and you go through that process, why did you want to smile at that person? What made you do that that day? So you've got to like, it's not judging, but you just got to explain it, right? Then you become the other person, you know, whatever they're going through. So you feel it. If they're suicidal, you will feel that grief and that trauma they're going through because you become them. You know exactly what they're going through that day. So as they walk towards you, you know, that might be a bad situation that they're going through. And that simple smile transfers and energetically connects to that person. So then they look back at you and they smile back, which is the ripple effect or that reflection that we talk about. Then you feel it tenfold and tenfold on that. So again, I'm sitting on those long pews <laughs> bursting with tears all over the floor because it was so bloody good so not all our memories are bad hopefully okay not all bad so how long did I say in my book that I was in this life review for it's hard to say because obviously I process some memories a lot faster than other ones so I'm just going through my book here now, looking at... Oh, there's the day I punched a girl at school. Jeez, do you think I'm proud of that event? Okay, so I've got it. That was when I was 16. Um, standing on an ant. I won't ever stand on an ant again now that I've been the ant and I know what it's like to be squished all over the bloody road. Ick. The broken window. I talk about the day I broke a window and how I became the window. So it's not just... um, um living items like animals trees and people we become anything because glass is a natural fiber and natural fibers do hold a consciousness so in this memory i put that one in there because i st i broke a window so instantly i felt what it was like to have all my pieces shattered all over the floor great so it wasn't a nice one um let me just go into here um, I'm just trying to find how many of these memories I went through so I can call it straight from my book. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's not it. Oh, here we go. So now I'm on page 151. I'm still talking about my life review. Some of the memories I went through were pretty easy as there was not a lot of an analysing or thought-provoking that needed to occur. Other times, though, I had to re really reflect back on what type of person Linda was at that point in her life, really working out the why and the how she created that intention for her actions. I'm reading it now straight from my book here, okay? Page, what did I say? 151. So if I had to suggest a time that I was in heaven, I would have to assume here that some memories took about 30 minutes, but others would have been hours where I really sat, you know, those big long benches, and I contemplated and thought deeply about what Linda had done and all the consequences and reactions of her actions at that point in her existence. So I would assume here that an average time of each memory would have been about an hour. So that makes 24 memories, which make a day, right? Because we have 24 hours in a day, right? So that's 24 memories a day. Okay, over 24 hours. So now when I multiply that by 24, which is 24 memories in, an, in a day, you multiply that by 3, um, 365, which is a year, days in a year, which represents a year. That equates to 8,760. 8,760. Still reading here from my book. This would seem to be an accurate calculation and that figure of 8,760 also would be indicative of how many memories I actually went, went through. So I can honestly say that, in, that I was in my life review for about a year or even longer. That's if I estimate each memory to be an hour because some of them went for hours. Hours and hours. Were you psychoanalyzing all your actions and reactions and why did you do that? Okay. 
Okay, many of the memories that I went through did not require much healing, so my contemplation of those could have only been taken about half an hour. So I won't, don't want to read any more because hello, it's a big long book if I keep going. So one thing I do want to say here, guys, before I actually um, stop the video, one thing I do want to go there with, which is deep. My memory now of sitting in my grandmother's front yard with that cat, it's a totally different memory now. You know, when I was about 16, I still had that recall of memory from a child, right? Like we all do with our memories. You can recall a time back in your youth, right? But now when I think about my grandmother's cat, the memory from 1967 is now gone. So the only way now that I can actually say that that memory occurred is because I saw it in 2001 when I stood, stood in front of the big three and I had that box in front of me. So now when I think about that cat, my grandmother's Persian, sitting in the front yard at her house, it's not from 1967 anymore. It's now from 2001. Because the memories that I'd cleansed and healed no longer exist. Food for thought. What do you think of today's video? Love to hear your comments. Please comment below if you've got any ideas or you've got similar experience because I love those commonalities that we all get with our experiences, right? My experience was pertinent just to me. We all have our own individual and unique experiences when we pass, okay? Um, so stay tuned for my hell book, uh, my hell video, because that is a doozy because I've just watched the last episode of the series Six in Lucifer on Netflix very very interesting what they've put into there because it relates to what I was told in heaven okay so any comments any feedback please comment below if you want to email me so it's private because some things you know are private please email me at linda at linda ray um, dot info if you do want a copy of my book it's on lulu and there's a link below as well if you do want to email me or go and grab a copy of my book and I'll talk to you all again soon stay safe most of all, stay in love with yourself. Talk soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.